Hi folks, welcome back to Channel Haunting Bonsai. This morning we've been over Rob's and we've been collecting some beech trees, Yamadori. We'll show you the videos of collecting them. Then Rob takes us for a walk around his garden and explains a few of his trees he's got. So I hope you like the video. Yeah, we repot the three trees over Rob's and I've got two to do here. That's why I'm a bit out of breath, I just brought them in. So I'll just show you mine when they're done, unless there's anything different I'm gonna to do to them. But it's basically just putting them up and get them grown. So stay tuned and I hope you like it. So me and Bobby's are it again. <laughs> We've got permission to dig all these beach up. And they're coming out lovely. Hey Bob! <laughs> Marvellous! <laughs> Look at that man. Back in a sec. <laughs> well, we've got five out and five to go. We had to run over the Christmas. Hey Bobby! <laughs> we're driving like this. Oh no, no. Well, we kind of shut the boot on the car. <coughs> so we'll just have to go like that. Huge, isn't it? <laughs> it's huge, yo. What are you setting fire for, Bobby? Because <laughs> I like burning trees. <laughs> Ask a silly question, I'm not going to give you a bloody answer. <laughs> We've just gone putting them into big pots, let them grow for a couple of years. This is just to put holes in the bucket so I can put some wire in the hole. Marvellous. So Rob's tying the tree into the pot. Took 30 minutes to get five of them out. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell them how easy it is, my right? Why? <clears throat> Wasn't a secret location, this one. Fill <laughs> in the fence. <laughs> tell them where it was. <laughs> up the back of there. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year's. <laughs> Sorted. So I've got a wire around the trunk. Put a little bit more on the top of there. And over the other hole. No, that's fine. Oh, that other wire. Ah, right? you've got it round and going into the other hole, haven't you? Yeah. Just stability is the main stability is the main thing about keeping it, getting the tree growing and, and getting your roots stabilized. If it's stable, it'll root faster. If it's rotten, your roots will just the new roots will just keep snapping. That's no good. You need to get stability. I'll put it up against this fence across here and this Hawthorn hedge protected and the weather I don't get a lot of wind there so I've got a lot of wind protection and next year come spring summer it'll just be allowed to grow then maybe it's middle of the year it'll get moved further into the open and fed and watered and look while well, we get watered a lot before then but it'll get one watering now and none of the water for quite a while but it'll be fine it's beach it's like a weed basically uh, you, can, you can tolerate quite a bit of root loss I mean, not masses, but quite a bit. Plus the advantage, this has been a hedge. So it's always been cut short. So the root system was short. Our only major thing was a major tap root, but they've just, more than most of them's just sawn straight off. We only had two of them, didn't we? Yeah, not a, not a great lot. So it should be fine. It's very compacted. Now all these trees, potentially, will be at least between two and three trees in each tree, because the, the top's clumps is going to be amazing. Um, then as you get further down, you're going to get a lovely tree with a bit of tape in the trunk. But some of the some of the clumps on the top where it's been just 
cut over as a hedge over the years has formed lovely amazing little what I would call clump trees which is going to be watch this space give us three years <laughs> we'll get there and then they might be getting some sores so watch this space <laughs> it was a one first boo <laughs> happy days so that's one down and we've got two more here two more here two to go to Ryan's and I've got two down one to do <clears throat> The ones will tuck in. That should tuck in. You know what I mean? We'll get rid of that on the bottom right, can't we? And lose a little bit of this kind of little cutters. What the hell? It's a bitch. Took a chance. Take a chance on me. That's the way he's just singing. <laughs> I think that would lose. Cheer all that off the bottom. I'm going to cheer that length off right. So oh, right. At the end of the day, what we've got. It's all up the top, isn't it? Mm -hmm. oh, there's nothing on them there, is no. it? There's nothing on that, there, no, there's nothing anyway. Mm. Cutters. Clean cuts. Show that one off now. Uh, get rid of it now. Uh, wait. It's a deep bucket, like it's not going to hurt now. Nah, I think we'll leave it on there. Mm -hmm. No, I've got to cut it off. Got to cut it off. No, it's too much of the stump. It's now on it. All the all the roots on there. There's nothing. There's nothing on it. There's live on there. There's tons in there. This is coming off. <laughs> So. It's not as blunt as mine. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't changed them from last year yet. Oh, we've done some correcting well. We're good, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good, you sure? You turn around with the update on one of the Hawthorns, the big one we collected. All the new shoots in one year. That's what we've got. And I've already made decisions of cutting off what I didn't need. Very big tree. He's nearly there. I'm not you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus. It's wet. Out. No, I'm nearly there now. <laughs> That's what I said. I'm nearly there now, Christ. <laughs> I'm coming for the glory. <laughs> he can piss off. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to do that. I'll well, speed that bit up. <laughs> I'll speed that bit up. <laughs> Happy years. That's a drainage course going in. Oh, You're Jesus. not picking that up, Mar. <laughs> You're not picking that up. <laughs> We'll get, we'll get weaker as we get on. <laughs> we do, we'll get weaker as we get on. Yeah, a bit more. We've got to get out of the hole.
Yeah. Time to lift the tree. I think I better just take a little bit out, right? Just in case. About to go further down. Always use your chopsticks. Or your fingers. <laughs> well, some of us, they get our hands dirty, you know, some of us is a bit, bit like wimp, like, like after the chopstick, you know what I mean? Excuse me! <laughs> you know, it lets the old man carry all the bloody heavy things. Ooh, you know what I mean? <laughs> I had to hold your tray, mate, because right. I would have went over. <laughs> Only had a few roots on it. <laughs> God, I've knackered already. One more to go. On. But look at the top of this of rank and horn in here. I mean, look at the ramification in there. Once we get an earlier and out of here, there's going to be an amazing clump. And I mean, we've got 10 trees, they've all got good tops on that's going to do the same thing. Then you can come down the tree. Once we find the best apex and make a chop, you're going to get a lovely, powerful trunk. Some nice moving tree. Than that now, isn't it, at the, bottom? the only thing is, it's it's got a little bit of lack of branches on one side where the fence, the old previous fence, has been grown up against it. So the branches has been good on one side, and not allowed to grow on the other side because of the fence. But that'll, that these trees now will get budding and they'll soon they'll soon catch up. Bit of good feeding. Let one side go. Um, keep the other side short till one catches up with the other, and then you can start making branch selection. I've already put the wire in these. One we prepared earlier. <laughs> this is a blue, what we call a blue Peter one. <laughs> one I made earlier. One I made earlier. That's what that likes you. <laughs> Over the strong branch. Find the hole. Pull it down, pull it tight, tie it up. Job's a good one. What size of them are? What size of them are? <laughs> Two down, one to go. <laughs> Two to go to Ryan's. <laughs> Happy days. You have to when it's, when it's when you know it's alive and it's, it's before you make the decision of earlier and that. I'd be tempted to, to, to leave it all at the right time of the year because you might want to create a tree a bit low with a bigger trunk with a massive frond on location. Is like a brown style. Uh, it could be an amazing tree. So there could be two possibilities with the top of this tree. We'll see. Well, not now. Need, we'll it, need it to live. It'll live. It's a beach. <laughs> it's a weed. Yeah, just a baby one now, mate. And he's right. Um, well, that's in the pot. <laughs> oh, it's time for a good drink. Okay, me benches. I was talking about me, not the trees. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> <There's that one. laughs> I just think Rob is still five to go. <laughs> Marvellous. That'll be it. After how easy they were. Amazing. Make things look a bit tidy. <laughs> even though it's not. Yeah, wrong time of year, aren't it? It is. This is a, this is a busy time. Especially in the UK, it's our time to really pot and everything. And the year I collected last year, twin trunk. Potentially a formal upright twin trunk in a few years. Grown like video. There's the hawthorns we've been getting. Yes, a hawthorn from Hawthorne. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> We 
many legs he's lost. <laughs> These are Rob's trees. Well, we'll give you a quick little guided tour of some of the stuff I've got. Um, stuff I'm working on for myself, basically. Um, on occasion, somebody comes up for sale, but very, very rare. Um, Hawthorne, this was collected from Whitby quite a while ago. It's been a very difficult tree, clump style. It's just had a wire in it again. It went into shock last year when I repotted it, because I had to wash all the roots out to get rid of all the old original clay. It's got a little bit of new carving, just block carving till the wood matures then I can get more grain and definition into the carving uh, but in time it should be a very very special tree wrong pot at the moment but it will be a commissioned pot when the time's right follow across the here <laughs> first one there's a little scots pine that was first worked on ooh god Long, long time. Was it one of the Sheffield dudes at the um, Sheffield Stadium? Um, when I done a demo on a big, big black black pine, uh, and I wanted to see let people see we're at with style because we knew we weren't going to get the black pine finished. I'll show you that tree later. Um, so there was two trees done on the same day, but the black pine wasn't finished, and it was took back the year later and shown as a finished way, a first style tree. So this one's been on the go a long, long time. Uh, Scots pine collected in the Rothby again. Most of my trees are collected. Very, very few I I have to buy. Um, next one in the middle, we have an Escalonia. Again, that came from a hedge, uh, and when it first came out as a big lump, this one on the left hand side of it, another Escalonia was actually part of the same tree. Over the year, me and the lad who collected it, we decided to split the tree. Consequently, when we split the tree, it lost its, this lost its main piece. So when we lost its main piece and what was left, I was at, managed to tip it up on its side and create a cascade. So actually losing the main piece made us a better tree. <laughs> so nature does, does have its say. Um, I'm just going to give you, give you a quick run through because I can be on here just talking about these trees. The next tree needs all its wire taken off. It was preliminarily styled early on in the spring this year. It's, it's having a little bit of suffer down here, but it's all alive. There's new buds coming in. Um, obviously, it's apical dominant. It's a Norway spruce. Um, it was collected in Scotland, uh, up in uh, the Galloway Hills. About, I think it's about five years now. Um, Ryan helped us repot the tree into this pot a couple of years ago. We give it a year or two to settle. It got its first style, and obviously in COVID last year, why right, this year. It now needs wire off because it's biting in everywhere with the growth I've got, especially on the top where the where the where the new growth is. So uh, when I dewire the tree, it'll be rewired again. You might see some photos in the spring. I don't like this, it's too thick, it's too ugly. It can't, it's like a pig snout. So that will be addressed and taken away and just leaving a better section of dead wood. Under my torrent gate we go. And we go onto what I've always called my salvatory tree. Pr uh, Prostrata juniper was collected from the front of some old baths many years ago and I done a workshop with Salvatore at Willowbog Bonsai in 2002. That's how old this tree's been, that long this tree's been on the go. It was obviously collected four, about four years before that. Um, it's been in the landers. This year I allowed it to grow really heavy. Um, a couple of months ago, why about a month ago, a month and a half ago, I thinned it right out. Give it a whole tot and your wiring. Um, and the new growth this year when I get it in the spring it should be it should come out stunning. Next one we've got a little larch. Um again collected by a friend. We've always called this tree in our club it's been a bit of a joke. It's always called the concept of bonsai. Um because of the lad who designed it he when he first done it one of the lads made a comment Mark do you know anything about bonsai? Do you know the concept of bonsai? And it's been a standing joke all these years. I'm not going to go into all the detail but over the years I've acquired it uh, and where it was always a one-sided tree and everything dropping down, I've allowed it to grow along and brought stuff around the side. I've never done anything with the dead wood. That's exactly how Mark created it. And I've just re literally redesigned the tree. Gonna be a nice tree. Pot's also very nice. Dan Barton. Good work, Dan Barton pot. The next one is a blue cedar. Collect bought for about, I think it was £18 in a garden centre. Uh, if you look at the top of the apex, for the, the top foot, it was collected at about that thickness. 
and then plant it in the ground for about seven years to achieve the thickness down below. Then the main trunk was chopped, which you can't see from here. Uh, put it into a container for a couple of years, then I repotted it into a pot after I got it established, because I don't know if anybody knows, but blue cedars can be a, a swine to repot. They're very, they're very unforgiving when you repot them. You've got to be very careful. But over the years, I've got it established. And it, first styling was only two years ago. So this is now ready to get the wire off. I want a slight angle change and maybe it's a better pot for the time being. Come on, well, and show your style, on it? It has, it has. The next one, um, again, a collected tree. I never collected the tree. Another guy collected the tree for us. Um, he collected two big ones and decided he only wanted one, so we've done a little bit of a swap. He got a U, I got a, a, a hornbeam. Um, I done a video on Facebook the other week of a clump of a hornbeam. Well, that's, this is where the clump came off. So there was actually two good trees on the one tree. Uh, in time, again, this only got its first styling this year. The wire is now off. Get to get a bit more weight ray wire next year. Uh, and it needs a lot of growth to get some thickness in the branches. But we're getting there. The one at the back is uh, Paisaia Abies uh, Spruce. I bought that off John Paul Pullman's. Collected, I think it was either in probably, John Paul's probably collected this in France. Um, is raw material. I've had it Oh, four year now, maybe it's five. Um, its initial styling was doing spring the year before. Um, repotted this spring, uh, and it needs, I think it needs a different pot. But as, as it is for now, needs a lot of growth, but it'll get there. On to my little trees, we'll start. I've got a couple of bits of raw material used. These are here at the side because these are some of the trees that I don't want to sell. Um, when I do sell trees, I have a few bits and pieces. Um, and when I find something I know is going to be really special, I put them to one side. They might not look special, but believe me, when the, when the time is right, they will be nice trees. Um, the next one is a Berberus I've had quite a while. It's in a, a Christina Charlin pod, very nice pod commissioned for the tree. Um, it's the one I'm thinking about getting rid of, but I'm not going to get rid of it until I repot it because I want to keep the pot for another tree. But that's another story. The next one. There's a tree that everybody seems to want when that's, they see it. That's mine. <laughs> it's got my name on it. <laughs> it's a little prune spinosa, blackthorn. I bought this material off Tony Tickle. Tony used to get some crackers. Um, but when I first bought it, all this was alive and twisty, but it was far too much for the trunk of the tree. There was a little, new little shoot growing on the tree, which I allowed to grow. And over the process of two or three years of getting the tree established into a pot, I was trying earlier and I've never had no success with earlier ends on a, on a prune spinosa. Hawthorns, larch, anything else more or less, beeches, anything great but not prunes for some reason. I don't know why. Um, somebody might tell us one of these days. So I allowed the little branch to grow for a few years. Then I decided to cut everything off and I've always kept what I call the pig's tail. as the little bit of dead wood. And I carved that and recreate the tree. But the beauty of the tree is the power and the, and the old bark and the movement in the trunk sitting on on the top with a bit of dead wood a little righty style tree in time when i get the ramification right this is going to be a, a superb tree again it'll need a better pot than what i've seen the next one <laughs> is well, again collected from a friend in yorkshire um it's some kind of a willow i don't know what variety it's just had the wire taken off back into the summer um it needs another wire to put everything back into place but it's so unusual very twisty a uh, bit of nice dead wood, um, powerful trunk, it goes a little bit straight about the way I've positioned the tree takes away the thinness of the base and you see the beauty of the of the flow of the tree. The next one, another you, like I say. He something likes special. his yews. Like I say, I've told you about them other ones on the end where I think you think it's something special. Look at this. This is going to be something special. This is another one from came from a collection where Tony collected his raw material. Um, one of my friends bought it at one of the birds do's. Half killed it, didn't didn't know what to do with it, traded it into me three to four years later. And this is what I've got. Um, given time, it's going to be a superb little, well, is it Shohin? Or is it Kifu? Kifu, I'll say. Um, depends on the size of the pot I get it into when I get it reduced. But that's another one. So these are my smaller trees, my section of smaller trees. I'll give you the quick walk around the front. <laughs> I'm not sure the two rough ends because it's too dirty. But this is my front end. You come in through my gate. 
You're greeted by a bonsai tree. You walk in and you have an amazing twin trunk, a Japanese latch. Again, the material, this was supplied by Willabog Bonsai. This isn't my tree. It's a tree that belongs to me and a guy in Whitby who unfortunately lost his son many years ago. And this is a tribute to young Michael. Um, this is a very emotional tree to me. But it's, it's going to be here. It's never going to be sold. Um, and it's just getting better and better every time I, I wire it and, and do something with it. It'll be, it will be shown. Hopefully one day we'll get to the, back to the Belgium trophy. Um, we'll see. Um, at the moment this year we're not sure what's going to happen, whether the show is going to go on or not, but we're hoping. The next one's a big Scots pine. Not styled. Bovernensis raw material. This is going to be a very, very special tree. This tree was acquired from a guy in York and a good friend. It was a garden tree and a big garden pot. Didn't want the material, didn't know what to do with it, so we've done a little bit of a deal. Come to me, and it's been here three or four years now. I've gotten it down from a big garden pot into a very, very shallow pot. I've done a bit, few chops at the top because I know the tree's height's going to come down. Hopefully it'll be styled either through late winter or early spring. It depends on the other work I've got to do and what I've got to get through. Moving on to something a bit more refined. This is what, this tree's called Little Learn. <laughs> this is a Taxus Bacata. Um, this tree was basically, um, this, this tree was basically, well, when Ernie showed us a tree where he collected and the state it was in, it was practically dead. So initially, Cut a long story short, we brought it back here, we repotted the tree, washed all the, all the rot out of the root, what root was there, stripped all what was dead, the whole left hand side was dead with a little live vein coming through the trunk line, so no it's not a tanuki, it's the real thing, because <laughs> um, everybody asks the same thing, but when you look up through here where the tree has actually grown into itself, you can see all the live vein on the inside, now you could not do that with a tanuki, but if, you, if Ryan has a look, quick look around the back, you'll see how the bark on the back is growing down the back of the trunk <clears throat> which is, makes the tree absolutely amazing so when I saved this tree's life it was basically a case of Ernie it was a case of Ernie said it was our tree but over the years I've developed it it's never been back to Ernie's it's always stayed here I've had quite a few lucrative offers for this tree um, it's a tree that's not for sale um, but I have brought Ernie out so it is now solely my tree that happened a few years ago um, because Ernie decided to sell his collection and we knew he wouldn't want this tree and it wasn't going to go anywhere so I've acquired the tree as my tree. Next tree is going to be so unusual. Now you can look at this tree now because it's got no leaves on you can see it better. I'll get behind it and you can see how big this tree is. Now what you're looking at here is basically the underside of what originally was the roots of a field maple. So the quick start of this is, a friend of mine where he lives, the council were building the road, pulled up, cut, cut all the trees down, start to bulldoze them out, ran out of money. So they fenced it off. When they fenced it off, the couple of trees that were left in the ground, upside down or pushed out of the sides, what was left in the ground, kept the trees alive. And the root had all died, but on the live bark, <laughs> buds appeared. So over the last five to six years, all these buds have created branches which have started to shape into a tree. Hopefully one day this will be at the Landers Tro at the Belgium Trophy, um, and it'll, I think it'll blow people's brains out to, to see actually what it is. I've actually got a new pot commission for it again. Hopefully I get it this year from um, Sperling and Bond, uh, Sperling and Potter from Germany. So and it's, it was ordered two years ago, but obviously the trophy wasn't on last year. So watch this space for this one. I'll give them a look at the back of it. Show them, a look, show them where the trunk was. The dark brown carved bit it was originally the trunk of the tree and i've tried to lay features in like bits of stone in the rock where the in the root where i would never remove that was all part of the root um the parts of the root that was stuck and dead i've left on as rotten bits of road um it's so unusual and now if you're looking if you get a bit closer some of the actual bark is starting to split and crack and get age so in a few years time when i get the ramification right and the styling quite right um, it's going to be a very, very unusual tree. Moving on to what personally I consider to potentially be the best tree in my garden. Another Taxus Bacata. 
this one was collected by me um got a very very powerful bs an amazing twist in the size and movement if you look around here ryan this lovely twist and that through here um again i'll get behind give you an idea of the size of the tree now this tree when i found this tree i thought it was a clump with about five or seven trunks if you see all the bits of dead wood coming off in sections and where the twist is under here when i dug the tree out all that twist was under the ground so it was like one of Camuri's trees the buried surprise that's exactly what this was um but obviously consequently it's made it an amazing tree the heavy branch at the top was both straight at one time very very straight so i've done the same principles where i've done mulat through the week i carved it all out again if ryan comes on the back and then put a tonic here on and bent it and got it to come right over and now it's got one live vein supplying the whole top which is starting to look amazing and um, this is also ready for a d wire and then a rewire um again another year and it'll be looking even better but the amount of growth this tree's brought this year has been phenomenal the use has done all right this year I mean, my use has been fantastic so, this year. Mine, eh? so uh, moving on quickly um Japanese pot, we have a Forsyth here. <laughs> Again, all my trees seem to have a story. Um, <laughs> this one, believe it or not, about, I think it's about five years now, maybe six years, came literally out the garden over the road. Um, the shell, the, 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 the lady of the house, decided one day she was sick of her garden and all these stupid hedges growing out the garden. And she chopped it down to a stump that big. And I saw her, oh, shell. Anyhow, Rob, oh, Robbie, I forgot bonsai. And it was a plain stump, nothing left on it. So I said, leave it alone, I'll dig it out. And I dug it out, and this is about six years later. It's really, it, it gets an amazing yellow flower in the spring, um, covered, you can't see the trunk for flower. So when it flowers, I'll put you a photo on. The next and last tray I'm going to show you the deer. Again, I'll have to stand beside it to show you the size. It's his little black pine. This <laughs> is <laughs> Pinus nigra. European black pine. This was collected from a mile up the road off a colliery pit heap. Over the years, I collected three of these trees. This was the biggest. Now, referring back to the little pine earlier on, this is the tree I, I first done its styling years ago in the Don Valley Stadium in Sheffield. Um, and I didn't get it finished. But at the time, Alan Harriman, who was the organizer, asked us to take a big tree, what nobody had seen as raw material, and show them how it starts. So that's what I did. This is or oh, many years later, I don't know how long it is. But unfortunately now for me, it's such a nice, I know it's such a nice tree, but this baby's going to a new home this year. No way, next year. Um, and I know where it's going, it's going to a very good home. So uh, yeah, I've had my journey with this tree. Um, I, I probably will see I'm disappointed to let it go, but I'm getting all there. I'm getting bigger trees are harder to handle. Um, and I've got a lot of good potential stuff coming on and I need a bit more space. So I'll just say bye bye to this tree now. So folks, I've got my two trees potted up. I've actually getting two little ones off the bottom because they're rooted. So I'll put them in pond baskets, cut them off. So I'll get the four. So I'll show you them before we end the video. So there's a little one off the bottom. Shout at the one root. And there's that one there. It's got one long root under there. So if it lives, I'll just early on the top. But let's go and have a look at the big ones. Here's one of them. It's got a nice clump style in there. Got it early about there. We'll get a nice clump out of that. And we'll just work our way down the tree in the next few years. And the same on this one. So not a bad day collecting for me and Rob. We're being our really again. Well, I'm doing any other note there. So, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.
and give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one. Ta-da, folks.